the loading state in Blazor WebAssembly has been upgraded in .NET 7. Let's see an action in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right in. So here I have a Blazor WebAssembly in .NET 7 version, uh, and it's the full template because note here that the blank template does not have this already set up. You can still use it in the blank template, but you have to create your own loading dialogue. So let's see us an action first. So you see what I'm talking about, and then we'll talk about how it actually works a little bit. So we're gonna load up the page, which of course the first time is gonna load off screen. You can see it there for a minute, um, but let's refresh this to see that in action. So refresh, and you have that little uh, percentage that loads up to 100% and then it loads the page. This used to just have a, um, just text at the top that said loading. And it was just, you know, plain text on, on the page. It said loading and then it loaded the Blazor with Assembly app. Now we have this, this uh, circle that fills up to 100%. Obviously with the blank template, there's not much going on here. And so it just loads pretty quickly. But, um, you know, if you had a full page of lots of stuff is starting up, Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but it would, you know, show the user that yes, we're, we are loading this page. We're, we're doing something. And it's important to show the user you're doing something. Otherwise they think the page is just locked up. And so they may just dive right off of it. But knowing that it's doing something keeps people on for a little longer while your page loads. Again, still important to have good loading on your page, but that's the new feature is that loading little dialogue or that little uh, dial. Now you may hate that. You may say that looks horrible. No worries. That's just their uh, starter thing that you can then either remove or, or change or use your own. And I want to show you how to use your own. So if you go to the uh, www root and we go to the index page, you'll see right here is the SVG for the loading progress. And then we have the div that is the text. So this is what you'd replace right here. If you decide I don't want this component, then take it out. Okay. You can just rip it out and we can even, you know, control X here and say loading like so. And then if we were run the app, we won't see that little circle. We'll just see that loading text right there. Like we are used to before the, if eventually loads up. Okay. Before the page loads up. So if you didn't want to, if you want to put it back to what it was, there you go. But this is that component that you can change. You can do anything you want. Can change the um, the size and the design of the circle, or you can go all crazy and put your own component in here if you want. Now, how do you get the values out of Bootstrap? This is one of those areas where I'm not real thrilled at how they expose these variables. It's not as clear as I'd like, but I understand they they have to load this very early in the process. And so they can't just give you, give it to you in the C sharp code because once the C sharp code is up and running, then you don't need this anymore. So what they do is they give it to you as a CSS variable, actually two of them I come down here at the bottom. You'll see, um, this variable right here, blazer load percentage. Let's unpin this. And what they're using is they're saying, Hey, the progress let's calculate there's pi times the variable blazer load percentage. But if you don't find it, then 0% times 0.8. And that gives you your, um, your load percentage on that circle. So this is the CSS variable blazer load percentage. That's the percentage of how far it's loaded. And then down here, we also have blazer load percentage text which gives you a text representation of that number. So where this is a number, this is the text representation, of that number. And of course, if you don't have anything being passed in, it says loading. So it first loads up before it even gets that value started. It will say loading. You could change that to 0% if you want. Um, that's what defaults to if it doesn't find a percentage, but, um, that's how you would you know, use this in your own code. You could just take this var load percentage and default that if you want. And you could uh, put that wherever you want in your own CSS and see it in a different way. 
So it's up to you how you use these two values, but just note that that's where you find them. And that is how you configure that new loading progress bar in Blazor WebAssembly. This is not for Blazor Server or Blazor Hybrid. This is just for WebAssembly because of the fact that WebAssembly is a full app that runs locally on the client. And that can take different amount of time depending on the speed of the client. You're relying on the speed of the client to render all its resources. So again, um, it's, like a, it's like a desktop app. So it just runs in the web. And therefore, you might have some initial load time that you want to communicate with the user and say, hey, I'm still loading this. Okay, so that is the new progress bar in Blazor WebAssembly in .NET 7. If you want the source code for this, check it out down in the description like always. And thanks for watching. I am Tim Corey.